morning and welcome to our next edition of Pause and Pray on this Wednesday the 13th of May. We're pausing to stop what we are doing throughout the day, to take some time to sit in the presence of God, to recognise his Holy Spirit with us and to delve deeper into scripture and then to pray, to ask God where is it that he is stirring our hearts and challenging our minds as we've read this scripture this morning. We're carrying on with our Philippians series. And so if you have a Bible, you might want to grab it now so that you can read along with me at home. Our reading this morning is Philippians chapter two, and we're starting to read at the 12th verse, and then we're going to finish the chapter off. So it's Philippians chapter two, starting at verse 12. Shining as lights in the world. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world. It is by your holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labour. But even if I am being poured out as a libation over the sacrifice and offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. And in the same way, you must also be glad and rejoice with me. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I may be cheered by news of you. I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. All of them are seeking their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But Timothy's worth, you know. How like a son with a father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope therefore to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I trust in the Lord that I will also come soon. Still, I think it necessary to send you, Ephroditus, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier, your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for all of you and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. He was indeed so ill that he nearly died. But God had mercy on him and not only on him, but on me also, so that I would not have one sorrow after another. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, in order that you may rejoice at seeing him again and that I may be less anxious. Welcome him then in the Lord with all joy and honour such people because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for those services that you could not give me. When Paul begins this section, he shares that as people of faith, we are not immune from grumbling. The very beginning of this section echoes similarities to Moses' farewell speech that we hear in Deuteronomy 31, right at the end of that chapter. And although Paul doesn't choose to speak quite as negatively as Moses does, he opts to speak and to celebrate the work that the church at Philippi have done. He opts to share with them how they are blameless and how they are blemish free as children of God. But there are similarities in the pattern of the speech and it draws into focus that both the Israelites and the church at Philippi and indeed us today are not people who are immune from that feeling of bitterness. His challenge to the church at Philippi 
was to say, your role as people of faith is to shine as lights in the world. For Paul, people of God are not called to survive, but called to shine. We're not called to be reactive to the world, but to act in recognition of what Jesus Christ has done. When we talk of hope, we aren't talking of an overly optimistic, jolly kind of disposition. No, as, as people of faith, we're recognising the reality of pain. You see, we can speak of a hope that comes from a point of scars. Our story, our narrative, the story in which we remember over Holy Week, is one where Jesus Christ sat in that point of pain, went to the cross, bore the pain and the sin of the world. He is a God that comes close to us, that draws near to us in our time of need. And yet we have a lens of hope of which to view that story with. Because it's the resurrection hope. The resurrection doesn't diminish the pain of what happened at the cross. But it gives us a new lens of which to view the story and a new lens of which to speak of hope. I think it's really significant that the risen Jesus Christ still bears the scars of the pain of which he went through. And this is profound for us who are experiencing suffering of many different degrees and kinds today in the midst of pandemic and virus. We can speak of hope, not in a cheery and dismissive way of pain, but through the lens of resurrected Jesus Christ, who knows pain, who came to dwell in the pain so that we would know that there is a hope that we can cling to. There is an end to these feelings that we might be going through right now. We are called in this season as people of faith not to give wish-washy speeches, but to be realistic and to be strong and to be courageous in our message of the reality of hope. The reality that in the midst of what feels like it's constantly changing, that Jesus Christ is still Lord. We aren't called to theologise or reason. We aren't called to search for the purpose and the meaning of this virus. What is God trying to teach us through this? No, what we are called to do is what Paul is challenging the church at Philippi to do. To shine as lights in the world a world that so often is yearning for light to shine so brightly, to be people that can speak of hope, hope that comes from a place of scars. Paul in all of his letters continually speaks of how life in itself is an act of worship. We just need to look at Romans 12. But in this passage too, he is speaking of how his death is also an act of worship. And the imagery that we get in chapter 2 verse 12 is strangely beautiful. He is uniting the church at Philippi and himself in the image of sacrificial love and death. A sacrificial offering of worship. To God. This letter was intended to be read aloud and as you get to this section of scripture you can imagine as it was read aloud that there will be tears streaming down the face of those who were hearing it because it was very real to live your whole life as an act of worship, to be willing to die 
as an act of worship. This speaks again of hope. Because Paul says straight after that, but rejoice. And that isn't artificial emotion. That is a response that comes from deep within, like the hope that comes from deep within. A thankfulness for what Jesus has done. A thankfulness of who God continues to be every single day. A thankfulness for the sacredness of life. The second part of this reading might seem like it kind of is a bit disjointed with the rest of the text. Because we're introduced to two people. Well, Timothy is introduced at the beginning as like a co-signer of the letter. But here Paul is also saying, I'm going to send one of your own back to you. Because do you not know what he has done in service for the gospel? In service of me and in service of Jesus Christ, of whom he loves so much. Ephroditeus is going to be sent back to his community, to his church at Philippi. And Paul is encouraging towards the end of the letter to say, make sure that you welcome him with open arms. You celebrate what he has done. You honour him as he has honoured Paul and as he continues to honour Jesus Christ, for he almost lost his life for the service that he gave. I was really inspired as I read that, of how it mirrors, maybe in part, what we're doing on a Thursday evening when we head out into our streets to clap for our carers. When we are showing great signs of thankfulness and emotion and encouragement for those key workers that are continuing to go to work, or those that now are having to go to work and risking so much to keep our economy going, to keep those who are vulnerable cared for, to keep food on our shelves, to work in our hospitals. Maybe we can be inspired by what Paul is saying to the church at Philippi and that we can remember to encourage those who are giving so much for the sake of others right now we can remember to be thankful and not just while we are staying at home, therefore we have the ability to clap on a Thursday evening, but may this continue. May we as people of faith continue in an attitude of thankfulness and encouragement for those who give their lives in service of others. And may we, as followers of Jesus, speak out, that our society will not go back to assume the rights of power and money to those at the top and forget those that are often regarded at the bottom, but the ones who act in service. May we speak out in this continuous thankfulness, encouragement and praise. May we be people of hope. May we speak authentically in times of trial. Remembering that come what may, that Jesus Christ is still Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for all that you have done through the person of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of your scripture. We thank you for the words that Paul has written to the church at Philippi. Father, we thank you for what we can learn. May we remember to shine as lights in the world. May we speak of authentic hope. May we be people of encouragement, thankfulness and praise. 
and may we remember that through it all, the challenge of a pandemic, of the readjustment of society, that you are still God. May we be fixed on you, people who rejoice in you always. Father, we thank you for the ways in which we have seen you move already in the midst of this virus. And may we continue to seek you out. May we continue to celebrate those who serve. And may we continue to have our eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen. Thank you for taking the time to pause and pray with me and with Philippians chapter 2 verses 12 to the end and I just I really hope that it's spoken to you afresh this morning and given you just a little bit of something to think about as we seek out to follow Jesus in an uncertain time but we can be certain of who it is that we are following. Amen.